Hi guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. This is my lovely Christine, and she has beautiful long hair. Look at this. Oh! Oh. And she has a very poor sense of balance. <laughs> Hop back on the chair. Hop. <laughs> so this is a bizarre worm test for you guys. Um, I'm going to trim up her hair a bit because it's just got a bit way too long. And not that I know what I'm doing, but we'll trim it up a little bit, neaten it up for her for Christmas, and I'll feed uh, the sample to the worms and see if I'll eat it. There we go, I haven't taken much off and it's just a bit neater oh, at the back. Off. Yeah. And we've got a small pile here. And I might get some out of the hairbrush and it'll give us plenty for a test. Now I've got a nice little area here to do this hair test. And just for a bit of extra dimension to the test, here's Christine's hair there and some out of the hairbrush, as I mentioned. So it's a fair sample. I've also grabbed some pet, or it's dog fur. Well, actually it's hair, because there's really no difference between um, animals' fur or hair and humans' fur or hair as far as its chemical composition. It's basically keratin. So we'll do a sample of each. Add it to this little testing spot here. Uh, there's really uh, no worms in here to speak of. I had a bit of a scratch around to level it out. I've done a few tests here recently uh, and the worms have finished off their tucker and moved elsewhere. So this will be a good test to see how quickly they come back into it, how quickly they eat the hair, if indeed they do. And we'll get uh, the results as we go. I'll probably check it in a week or so. Okay, it's only been three days, but I've been doing some filming today and I thought I'd check in on this hair test to see where we're up to, or where the worms are up to. Well, let's have a peek under here. Oh, yep, look at this. They're getting into it. So it looks like no issues as far as being consumed goes. The um, dog fur, or hair, I guess we'll call them both hair, appears to be fairly popular. There's lots of worms there, quite a lot of little tiny ones in there. And Christine's hair is also popular. So, is there any underneath? Yeah, not so many, but they're certainly getting on top of it. So it's obviously going to take them a while, but um, they are certainly interested. So we might leave it a week now and we'll check it and see how much they've got through. And now we'll follow up on this hair test. It's been uh, it's been about 10 or 11 days, so I haven't had much chance to get back into my yard. And I've had some warmer weather, so that's why I put this towel on the top to try and keep it damp. Um, and there's actually worms coming through the carpet and up into the towel, so they're probably going to eat the cotton. But I think it has kept it damp. I've missed a few days watering. Oh, look at this. It's certainly damp. There's plenty of worms under there. Whoa, look at that. They're going berserk. Um, the hair is starting to disappear. Oh, look at them up on right here. The hair is starting to disappear under a layer of worm castings. Uh, it's flattened right out. And there's plenty of worms right through it by the looks of it. Now that was the dog hair. And Christine's a little bit more coarse and longer strands as you saw. And it's kind of matted together a bit. And there's plenty of worms in there, all in through it. So it's going to take quite a while to break down. I don't think um, hair or keratin as such is something that kind of goes mouldy and breaks down like food does. Um, and sometimes if you find the, the decaying remains of an animal, uh, quite often you can see the fur or hair still around. So it must take a while to break down. But certainly the worms are going to eat it. I don't think there's any issues there. Um, they're getting right through it. So I'll keep this experiment going. Um, I might, yeah, I'll probably leave it for a couple of weeks and keep it damp. And we'll do one final check before I post this video. And let's do a final check on this hair experiment. Um, it's been another week or so since we last looked. And it has dried out a little bit today. But there's mountains of worms in here. Um, 
I need to point out this garden bed actually had a lot of coffee grounds in it probably nine months maybe even 12 months ago and there's always been a good population of worms in here because of that but how have they gone with the hair well there's still a mat of hair here this is Christine's hair and the worms are getting through it so it is being consumed I think but it's clearly going to take quite some time so we might have to leave this experiment one more check and we'll give it a month or more and just to see now the the pet hair I think it was dog hair this one uh, again there's still a mat of that there um, but there's plenty of worms in there as well so I'm pretty sure they're going to eat it all it's just going to take some time uh, the the compounds I guess in it the keratin must take a while to break down so we'll do another check on this experiment but I will leave it for a good month or so maybe even a bit longer and just make sure that it's going to be consumed so it's time to do a final wrap up of this hair experiment um, I've left it six weeks since we last had a look and I did have a couple of peaks during that time and not much was happening so I thought I'd give it a fair stint now it appears there's actually no worms here at the moment oh there's a nice little or big uh, trapdoor type spider he's not happy with me disturbing him I might just encourage him to disappear under the house come on oh we might just leave him there now there's no worms to be seen here um, I'm sure there's still some in this test bed but we wanted to see what's happened with the hair now the dog hair is still here it's rather matted but it is and it's spread around a bit I think last time I had a look I sort of pulled it apart uh, but it's still mostly there now I got excited when we were first doing this experiment after a week or so it looked like the worms were going to eat all the hair but as I said over the last six weeks I've checked it and there's really not much going on the worms have moved elsewhere and when we look at it and account for the fact that it's been sort of compressed it looks like just about all this hair is still here now I've been doing a bit of reading and as I mentioned earlier the hair is made up of a protein called keratin and it appears that it's very resistant to decomposition the enzymes and microbes that break down other tissues um, don't get into hair as well it's a very strong protein apparently and I read that it can take or well, depends on conditions but it can take one to two years uh, to break down uh, even much longer and you often find skeletal remains of animals and their big doomed bodies that still have a full head of hair in dry conditions so it's not going to break down easily which means the worms aren't going to get into it easily uh, the larger population of worms we had here at the start of this experiment I think was mainly because it had dried out a little bit and then I've kept it damp for this experiment and the worms have come back into this area because there was residual coffee grounds here they did seem to get into the hair a bit and I suspect they weren't necessarily eating it they were just using it as a as you know perhaps it was a bit more oxygen rich because it um, you know may have just provided a bit of area that they could get into without being compact particularly when it was quite wet so it appears they're not really eating the hair I have no doubts that eventually it will break down but it's certainly not going to be an ideal addition to your worm farm uh, I did read numerous people online say oh the worms love it and it's a source of nitrogen but look if you chopped it up fine into small lengths it would probably disappear into your worm farm and still be there you just wouldn't be able to see it uh, whereas in these big clumps it certainly shows that the worms haven't come in and eaten it they probably will eventually but it needs to break down which could be a long time so whilst it's not going to do any harm to your worms I'd uh, I'd put it in the basket of not ideal worm food uh, a little bit of clippings small amounts every now and again certainly won't hurt uh, larger amounts won't hurt but they are going to get messy and tangly especially if it's in long lengths so in conclusion I would say hair isn't the best in your worm farms it's going to take a long time to break down 
and uh, you also have to be considerate of you know if you've dyed your hair perhaps there's going to be chemicals in it uh, if your pet hair has had uh, a treatment for fleas perhaps before it was clipped or the pets have been wormed there could well be things in there that will harm your worms so I would say not worthwhile using pet hair horse hair any animal hair or human hair uh, it certainly doesn't hurt but it's not going to be a good worm food all right so we've had a uh, an experiment that perhaps didn't give us a, a flash result but we still have information we've learned something and i think that's a good thing thanks for watching we'll get out for me in my next video uh, i've got a quite a lot of worm projects or almost finished so i'll be doing a few of those over the next few weeks cheerio for now